Hello everyone, thank you very much for watching a new tutorial that I make. In this week's project, I'm gonna transform this tall uh, furniture. Uh, I'm gonna make it uh, for uh, the new room that I started to work uh, on here at the BMB. <laughs> Babe says hello too. Let's go and let's see what I'm doing. <laughs> let's see what I'm doing this week. So primer red and graphite i'm gonna use a third color which is cocoa but a little bit later let's go with these two for the beginning mixing well the paint make sure that all the ingredients are well mixed and some sidewalk chalk which i really like to use lately i used it uh, quite often Cut it in small pieces and then I come and I um, press well on it and I make it a powder. I leave some beads bigger, some beads smaller. So when I will come with the blade and I will erase it, because I will do that, you will see later on, then uh, the texture uh, will um, be different sizes. So I don't know how to explain, but we will see together. So, first graphite, I put the brush in the paint a little bit and then I put it in the chalk and then again in the paint. So I take the chalk from that small plate and I mix it with the paint. Without cleaning the brush, I come with the second color, with the primer red. Anyway, I want the colors blended in that area, so I don't care if the brush is not clean. Actually, it's helping me because uh, the colors are already mixing. And with a clean brush, I come and I buff well the area where I want the colors to be blended. And so the blend becomes softer and nicer. I repeat the process here, the same. And uh, you will see I'm cleaning the brush from time to time and I remove the excess of paint from the brush, making sure that the blend is nice and smooth. And now it's time for the decoupage paper. I'm using the decoupage gel from Redesign with Prima and this beautiful decoupage paper called the Chapelle Royale. It's part of a new collection from Redesign with Prima. And it's beautiful, it has golden insertions. It's really, really beautiful and elegant. The process is simple. I watered down a little bit this gel because it was too dense and I wanted it a little bit more liquid. And so I spread it equally on the surface. The surface, usually I like to paint it a lighter color, so the colors of the decoupage paper will be more visible. I put cocoa on the top of the furniture. Place it well, remove all the air bubbles. Make sure it's straight. And then I come with um, an abrasive sponge and I remove the excess of the decoupage paper. After that I'm coming with uh, a new coat of uh, gel. This one is uh, sealing actually the surface. I repeat the process on the drawers, on the side, on the front of the drawers. I cut the excess with this very sharp knife, which is also from Redesign with Prima. And 
and with the same decoupage gel I come on top of the paper pour some on the surface and spread it with the brush and with this spatula also from Redesign with Prima I come and I press firmly make sure that there is no bubbles no air bubbles underneath the paper and now a new product that uh, is being released uh, these days uh, from Redesign with Prima it's a gilding uh, marker from CC Restyled uh, and Redesign with Prima it is very shimmery it has a very good coverage very easy to use as you can see and what is great is that I can come on top of it with waxes with paint and I can distress it it's really an amazing product See how beautiful it is? I love it. And the difference before and after the gilding marker. And now one of my favorite parts, <laughs> the transfer. I chose this a new transfer from Prima, which is a gold leaf transfer with fleur de lis. I cut it into half, exactly the size of the side of the table, of the furniture, place it straight and I come with the spatula from the design and I press firmly, make sure that the transfer stays on the furniture. When you have texture on the furniture, Usually the transfer goes a little bit slower, so I take my time and uh, I press well, make sure that all the transfer is transferred on the furniture. I use my nails, <laughs> I use the tool, it's a mix. But look at the design, it's so pretty. And now it's time to create some molds. I'm using this uh, new mold, also from Redesign with Prima and also part of the new release. Oh, many, oh, so many <laughs> products from the new release, but really they are so beautiful and they fit so well, the project, I had to use them all. So I mix uh, the part A with part B from the amazing casting um, resin. Uh, then mix it well and then I pour it into the mold and look at the magic it takes about 10-15 minutes for the resin to dry and now it's ready I remove uh, the extra of the resin that uh, happens to be there <laughs> and now I paint it a little bit put some paint and it's time to apply it on the furniture as you can see here it's already rigid because I made it like a few I don't know maybe half an hour ago and I hit it with the heat gun or with the hair dryer and it will become flexible again you will see well you see how it's bending already it's again very flexible and with the wood glue I put it on the furniture and I remove the excess of the glue with the brush make sure it's aligned with the other one in the middle of the drawer and I come again with the hair dryer and this will help uh, the glue to dry faster it's time for some uh, wash as I told you earlier in the beginning of the video I'm using cocoa for the wash I took with the brush a little bit of paint I put it in this can I put some water I diluted the paint it 
it's a mix I think of uh, maybe 30% paint and 70% water I don't want it to be too thick I really want it thin this is the consistency that I need If it is too concentrated then uh, it will be very difficult to remove it from the furniture after applied so let's go <laughs> let's see I water I actually I missed the surface this way the wash the watery paint will go easier on the surface I have these two tools from my friend Monica, <laughs> Monique, and I have this uh, natural sea sponge. I'm gonna use it also. So I take the paint and I let it go down. I let the gravity do the, the job. <laughs> I put here and there I prefer to make the wash this way because all these drops they will be visible when I put the wax and so I really want this dripping to be seen I find it more beautiful but you can make it in any other way this is my way and so with the clean sea sponge natural sea sponge I come and I buff I don't know how to say I remove a little bit of the paint I think it's easier for you to just watch how I do it and then with the spatula I come and I remove the beads from the chalk you remember we added the chalk before when we painted and now I remove those beads and that will reveal, in some areas, they will reveal the, um, the natural wood, which is really, really nice. I love that. You can repeat one more time or two more times, depends, depending on how much you want to hide from the from the first coat I don't want to hide too much I want those beautiful colors blended to see to be visible through this wash so only one coat of wash I've done for this furniture but this will really make the design look very old and vintage and worn so I like to do it this way And now let's repeat the process also on the front part of the furniture. I missed well the surface. And I apply the paint in the same way. Let it run. Let the gravity do the job. It is a little bit more difficult on the front because of the drawers and um, don't forget after you do this on the front of the uh, furniture with drawers uh, to take the, to take out the, the drawers and to clean well because the paint will definitely go also inside the drawers so while the paint is still wet don't forget to take out the drawers and clean well inside. I play with the spatula, with the blade, I remove the beads from the chalk. Now it's a little bit easier because the paint is wet, I missed it, the, sur I missed it the surface, so it's, uh, it's very easy to remove the beads. And with the sponge, I come and I tap 
the surface as you can see it won't stay so light when it dries it will get darker so don't be scared there is a stage when you do washes and the furniture really looks ugly this is the stage where it, the furniture really looks scary but trust the process and now it's time for my favorite part the beautifying how i call it uh, so over the clear wax that I applied earlier, I come now with dark wax, it's a dark brown, also from Stone. I use this amazing tool, also from Redesign with Prima, it's made out of silicone and it really helps me to create this dripping because it's quite pointy and it's a little bit uh, flexible but yet quite rigid, so I can really play this, uh, this dripping with the wax. I don't know why I'm doing it and it's a step that you really can, I don't know, pass if you don't like it, but I like it. It looks like uh, the gold is dripping or the, the, the dirt is dripping also, I don't know, I, I like it, I, I cannot explain why I like it, but I do. So I come with, uh, with this uh, mix of, uh, of I'm, I'm mixing the brushes, um, I play with different sizes of brushes and I go with dark wax, uh, yes, especially on the corners, on the details, where normally the dirt and the heavy usage would put, uh, would put these shadows, so yeah. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> Making a uh, new furniture look old, right? So. just darken the area and it won't be visible like you, you can see it now after I buff it well you see I remove the excess and only in certain areas you can see the surface a little more brown darker And now it's time for the gilding wax. I try to imitate the way a furniture looks like when the sun hits the surface. So I keep the dark waxes on the lower points of the furniture and I come with the gold on the higher points of the furniture if that makes any sense <laughs> i hope it does i use a mix of brushes my fingers where i need to be precise like this frame of the drawer i will always go with my finger because i can precisely add gold only where i want it and with the fun brush a small fun artist brush I come and I make the gold dripping and I spread it with my finger because this way will look organic And because I already sealed the decoupage paper with the decoupage gel, 
and now it's dry it's the second day already I can come with the wax over the paper just like on the rest of the surface there is no restrictions and I do the same so I come with the black with the dark wax with the brown wax and I spread it nicely on the corners I create this ombre these shadows and now with the fun brush I come and I touch a little bit uh, over the uh, dark wax and I bring back a little bit of the shine here and there just a little bit and uh, of course under the knobs I do the same as I've done uh, on the first three drawers which are only painted And look who stays with me and look who's working with me, it's Luna and she likes me to shake her hand and to give her kisses. She stays with me all the time, she is my number one fan. <laughs> I love her so much, she's so cute. And my father-in-law, of course, Valentin, who is always helping me and filming me, he's there with me. Kisses from mommy. <laughs> don't let me go. Don't go. <laughs> and of course, babe. Nothing can happen without babe. <laughs> they are so cute, so sweet. I love them so much. And here we are. It's ready. I love it. It looks so authentic, vintage, and old. And. I just love it maybe I love it so much because I made it I don't know if you also like it don't forget to uh, leave me a comment to let me know what you think about this project and if you want to see something uh, I don't know something else uh, let me know let me know in the comments let me know on social media I will always answer you any questions that you might have um, and uh, thank you very much for watching this tutorial it really means the world to me to have uh, to have you watching it and learning from me and until next time see you and take care of you bye thank you